Well, good morning. Welcome back to Sunday School as we continue to walk through and discover um, the biography of Jesus. What an, uh, an exciting time to be learning and to be studying as we are under quarantine and under these uh, peculiar days. And so what a comfort the Word of God is to us and our families. And so this morning we pick back up in Jesus' uh, story or Jesus' um, context of where he is uh, in life. And so this morning we find ourselves in Luke chapter 4. Uh, verses 1 to 13. And so as we begin, I want to ask you, have you ever been tempted or allured to do something that maybe, given time to think about it, you wouldn't participate in? And so this morning, we are going to look at the temptation of Jesus. And so last week, we looked at and studied on Easter Sunday um, the resurrection narrative uh, from 1 Corinthians' perspective. And this morning, we go back uh, to the Gospels and pick up where we left off the week before on Palm Sunday when we looked at the baptism of Jesus. And so this morning, we pick up in an episode that, that follows the baptism of Jesus. And so we got to remember as we're looking at the Gospel um, books and as we look at the the descriptions that are laid out for us there in um, each of the Gospels, we see that they all are telling the same story, right? But they're not telling every episode of Jesus' life, right? Because most of the Gospel books have um, about 20 some odd chapters, and that's not indicative of 20 some days of Jesus' life. And so we know that, but sometimes we lose sight of it, and, and we think that every episode uh, follows the preceding chapter or the preceding verse. And so today, I believe that we do see uh, this come quickly. We're not told that it comes exactly after the baptism, but I think it comes pretty quickly after that because in Luke chapter 4, we see that Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, right where he was baptized, and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And so as we read those verses, right, some things automatically go up, right? I, I talked about a few weeks ago in the Jordan that in the wilderness um, is where the Jordan is, is placed. And we see that their wilderness of Israel is quite different than our wilderness that we think about in the Great Smoky Mountains. And so Jesus goes into this wilderness and we see that he is led by the Holy Spirit. Right? And so we see here that the Holy Spirit is guiding Christ and guiding Christ into the wilderness. And so as we have been journeying through all of Scripture, what do we think about when we think about the wilderness? Well, maybe it clues us in in verse 2. For 40 days, right? And so who spent a period of 40 in the wilderness? Right, we think about the Hebrew children and as um, Moses led um, the Hebrews out of exile, right? They wandered in the wilderness for 40 days, or they wandered for 40 years. We see Jesus is tempted for 40 days. And so he's being tempted, right? We see an, an ongoing action that has taken place there by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. Um, and so I want to give you time now to read um, Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 13, because I, I won't have time to read through all of those verses because I'm going to try to actually hit my 10-minute mark uh, this week. And so uh, take time now to read those 13 verses. And so when, when you read through those verses, what is it that jumps out to you? Probably the temptation of Jesus, right? You see Jesus and the devil, we see them interacting, and we see that, that Jesus is specifically confronted with three specific temptations. And the thing that I want us to contemplate this morning is, are you and how are you being tempted? Because our rhythms of life are somewhat altered in this time of our lives. And so maybe we're facing new temptations that a month ago were not temptations because we weren't in this rhythm of life. And so, one, I want us to see 
that our Savior identifies with us, right? We have verses like Hebrews uh, 4.15 that tells us that Jesus has been tempted, right? Um, we see 1 Corinthians 10.13 that talks about that, that there is no temptation that we are put before that by Christ we don't have the power to, to come out of. And so I want us to see that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. And I, I want us to understand that it may be for the glory of God and it may be for our good that we are led into temptation. Now we know like the verse in James 1 where, where God does not tempt us, right? Uh, but we do see that, that God puts difficult days before us. He puts challenges in our way, right? Um, because we are called to be light in a dark world. And so I wonder, what are the temptations and the trials that are before you? We see three specific episodes. We see three specific temptations laid out to Christ. And we see that Satan uses and twists Scripture to try to uh, allure, to try to tempt Jesus. But what is uh, the response of Jesus? He responds with Scripture accurately. And so there are many in our day that will take things that sound good and try to put them in our way. Uh, like I was talking to an individual just yesterday, talking about how music can be deceiving. Even Christian music can be deceiving. It can be under the guise of Christian music, but not have a biblical message. And so we need to be discerning in what we are reading and what we are putting in, right? And how we respond. And so we see Jesus model perfectly for us how we are to respond when we're tempted. And so being tempted is not the sin, right? It's when we give in to that temptation because Jesus was tempted and yet he was without sin. And so I want to encourage you that just because you are tempted to sin, does not mean that you are um, uh, wayward. It doesn't mean that you are struggling. It doesn't mean that, that God has forsaken you, right? Because we see the Holy Spirit leads Christ into temptation, right? Leads him into the wilderness where he is tempted, rather. And so I want to encourage you that just because temptations are coming your way, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are out of bounds or doing something wrong. But how do you respond when you are tempted. And so I want to encourage you maybe as a family to talk about where are those areas where you're tempted, right? Uh, because my temptations as a as a 15 year old are different than they are now as a 40 year old. Some of them are the same, but a lot of them have changed. And in this rhythm of life, my temptations are different than previous rhythms of life. And so do you make known to other people where you are tempted? Do you have people advocating for you in this season? Do you have people lifting you up, keeping you accountable for those things? And so we see that Jesus perfectly um, endures the temptations, right? But we also see that he, he spent time um, he spent time with his heavenly Father. And we see that, that he, he is tempted on the backside of being baptized. Right. And so a lot of times our temptations may come and, and hit us square in the eyes directly after a, a mountaintop experience. Right. Jesus has just left his baptism where we see the Trinity. Right. And he goes into this um, wilderness area where he is tempted. And so we we are not to be uh, dismayed that temptations can come at us at any time. And so are we ready to fight temptation with the Word of God? Jesus knew the Word of God, and He responded with God's Word. Are you responding to temptation with the Word of God? Have you hidden the Word of God in your heart, in your mind, so that when temptation comes, you can respond with the Word of God? I pray that you are. I pray that you're taking time now to, to guard your mind, to guard your heart with the Word of God. So. Take time, spend time in God's Word, knowing His Word, memorizing His Word, so that you can defeat sin, you can defeat temptation by the power of the Holy Spirit that is guarding you by the Word of God.
Let me pray for us. Father God, thank you so much for your word. God, we thank you that we have your word and that we can hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. So Father God, help us. Holy Spirit, lead God and direct us whether in the wilderness or whether on the mountaintop or in the valley, may we be confident that you are going before us and that you have provided a way out of all temptation. Might we cling and desire and hold to your word more than we desire our sinful passions, flesh, and desires of the moment. So, Lord, we pray, would you help us honor you with our time? In the name and the power of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to check out the resources and also to check out what John and Tara have um, this morning for you and pay attention to what the pastor's preaching and teaching. We love you. We miss you. We look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.